Hi everyone, have you ever wondered how you can buy your first real estate? In this video, I'm going to share with you the techniques that you need to buy your first real estate with little money. This video is mainly for those that are just starting out in real estate. I'm going to unpack the different steps that you need when it comes to owning your first property. It is just like a ladder. So before we jump into it, it will mean a lot to me if you smash the like button and subscribe if you've not done that yet. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. First and foremost, this video is mostly for beginners. So it's going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how you can get your feet into the door of the world of real estate. So I'll keep it simple and not complicated like most of the video on real estate that I've worked on this platform. This could be a 30 minutes video, but I've condensed it down to less time because I value your time. Real estate is a very good investment and you can never go wrong with it. Let me tell you a little secret. Most of us have dined at McDonald's. As of 2020, the company was operating 40,031 outlets worldwide. But what if I told you McDonald's is a real estate empire hiding under the gaze of a fast food chain? You too can own real estate by leveraging a little down payment and making lots of money in return. And the good thing is people that are living on your property will be the one paying your mortgage for you while making a profit on your property. And then long term, you end up owning the property outright and you will start making a lot of rental income. And with that, you could pretty much enjoy the fruit of your labor. Believe it or not, this is something that you can start working on today as soon as you finish watching this video. So I highly recommend everyone who is watching this video to go and utilize these techniques. So with that said, here are nine steps that you can start applying today to get your first property. This is something that you've heard many times over and over again, but it is worth mentioning. Build your credit score. Guys, if you're planning to get into real estate, there are two ways you can acquire properties. One is buying it outright or using debt. Most people leverage a small down payment and they use debt to get properties. In other words, call a mortgage. If you're getting a mortgage, your credit score is one of the primary factors lenders look on when you apply for a loan. If your credit score needs work, take steps now to start improving it before you apply for a mortgage. You need a good credit score because lenders look at it to determine what kind of loan they're going to give you and at what interest rate. Normally, a 620 or a higher credit score is what you need to get a good interest rate. So the higher the credit score, the lower the interest rate that you'll pay. This means that you'll have more money back in your pocket every single month. When you have a bad credit score, lenders are going to charge you a higher interest rate if you want the loan or even decide not to give you the loan after all. Not building your credit score will cost you a lot of money in your lifetime, but also you'll miss out on opportunities of owning properties. So this is one step that you can start immediately after watching this video. So as soon as you finish watching this video, check your credit score. To check your credit score, you can go to creditcalma.com. Step two, start saving. You should start saving money if you've not done so. By doing this, you'll be setting aside money for down payment and also for monthly mortgage payments. The reality is you'll not be able to invest in real estate if you've not put down some money aside and if you don't have a good credit score. You will need to put down a down payment anywhere between 5% and 20% of the purchase price. So besides a good credit score, to get a loan at a good interest rate, you will also need to save money. This may mean that you start budgeting and also it may mean to live modestly, to be able to save money for down payment. So for you to consider investing in real estate, you will need a good credit score and also a down payment. The more money you put down on a mortgage, the better for you. Lenders really like this. Step three, organize your income records. If you are employed and you want to secure a loan, you will have to show your pay slip for the past months. And if you're a business owner, you will have to show your income on your tax returns. For business owners, this means you won't just go and utilize one of the months that you had the best sales to secure a loan. Lenders try to avoid high risk borrowers that may not be able to make payments after a few months and then default after the first year. So to do this, you are required as a business owner to show proof of income on the last one to two years of your tax returns. And if you are employed, lenders will like to see up to six months of your pay slips. What mortgage lenders do, 
they will look at your last two years of tax returns and will take the average of the income between those two years and they will base the loan on that. And for those that are employed, banks will base on the six months of your bank statements and they'll base your loan on that. For anyone self-employed, if you're planning to show your tax returns for purposes of acquiring a mortgage, you should not go too heavy with the tax write-offs because lenders often look at your net income after all your expenses. It is a rule of thumb before filing taxes to show your potential lender your tax returns before filing it with the state. For them to determine whether or not the income that you're showing is sufficient for the loan that you want to get. This also helps you to be pre-qualified by the lender. It works out just fine for you to show your lender your tax returns before filing them. Getting pre-qualified by the lender is such an important step and will save you a lot of time and also from a lot of disappointment. Step four, get pre-qualified. This is one important step in acquiring a mortgage and will save you from a lot of disappointment as mentioned before. What ends up happening for those people that are not pre-qualified, they will be disappointed after falling in love with properties and yet they can't afford it. But just save yourself the headache and frustration and the waste of your time by speaking with the lender first. It is very easy as going to a few different banks and having them run your credit by providing them with your tax returns, bank statements and anything else they will need. They will pre-approve you based on the information that you provide. With the same information that you have, you can go and shop around at other banks. There are two main advantages here of you getting pre-qualified by banks. The first advantage is that you'll have security just in case the first bank can't perform. So you will have other options to get a loan. And the second advantage is that you'll most likely get the lowest possible rate on the loan. So it is not bad to shop around before you settle. Step five, research multiple houses within your budget. This step is where you do your research and see everything on the market in the area where you're interested in buying your property. Find out which areas are undervalued and are poised to go up in price. It is a rule of thumb to invest in areas that are just outside of other areas that have dramatically gone up in price. One can invest 10 minutes away because eventually what ends up happening is that that area will go up in price since people will start looking to rent outside the main area, hence ending up renting your property. Step six, apply for the mortgage. Once you have made an offer on the property that you're interested in and it has been accepted, then you take a step of applying for a loan on the place that you think is a good deal. Something you need to remember and very important to note is that you need to know the price of the property. Lenders will need to know how much money you want to borrow, so you need to have that information at hand. Also, by knowing what the properties are worth, you will be in good position to not overspend on something that you don't feel that is 100% worth it. So what ends up happening after you've applied to the lender, the lender will now look in detail at the property you intend to buy and they will also conduct a valuation to ensure the price is a fair reflection of what the property is worth. If the lender is satisfied with your application, then they will make you a formal mortgage offer. The time frame for a decision varies from lender to lender. So this leads me to the next step. Step seven, carry out inspections. So once you get your offer accepted, this is when you go and now carry out inspections on the property. It's advised that you carry out as many inspections in and out of the property as you can. Just get to know what you're getting into and the condition of the property. If you plan to do some work on the property, it is always advised to bring in one or two contractors to give you actual bids on what it's going to cost you to bring the property up to date and fix any issues. The amazing thing is that oftentimes the contractors will not charge you any fee because they want to get your business. They will give you fast hand experience of what's actually needed. Step eight, closing on the property. Once you have done your homework, which includes carrying out inspections on the property, as mentioned in step seven, you can now go ahead and close in on the property. All the information that you have gained from doing the inspections will be very useful when you go back and speak with the lender. You will have all this information at hand when they request it. The bank will do an appraisal on the property to show they are actually lending on a property that's worth what you're actually paying. The whole process of closing usually takes anywhere from as low as 20 days to as high as 45 days, depending on the type of property and how much work you did ahead of time before getting your offer accepted by the bank. This leads me to step nine. 
start renovations. Once you have closed in on the property, now you can go ahead and start minor cosmetic renovations. In step five, I mentioned that you need to choose a property that is undervalued and in an area that is poised to go up in price. Having done your work, you'll instantly get value for your money. Keep this in mind, the more the home is worth, the more you can rent it out, which means more money in your pocket every month. Before I go, please help me help others by hitting the like button. In this way, YouTube will recommend this video to new viewers and subscribe to the channel if you've not done that yet. And please turn on the notification bell. In this way, YouTube will notify you every time we upload a new video. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. Until next time, Shalom. Also consider watching our other videos on my left.